Hello, you are watching the news from Kazakhstan. I'm Marina Kim and these are the top stories. Employees of the corporation Quad attempted to block the Almaty Eastern Bypass and protest against the delay with the wage areas. Almaty District Court hears the case on the refugee status for Uzbek citizens detained in the summer. The culture minister resurrects the competition of Kazakh Bards, although asking them to refrain from criticizing the president. On Tuesday, employees of the company Kua Trans Service held a spontaneous protest action attempting to block traffic at the eastern entrance to Almaty. This way, people are trying to draw the attention of authorities to their problem. For three years, the employer fails to pay back its workers. The PK was quickly suppressed by the police, who arrested Daulet Jumabek of the consulting lawyer of the company's employees. An attempt to block the eastern bypass in Almaty ended with the detention of lawyer Daulet Jumabekov. This way, the former employees of Kuat Trans Service, the branch of the Kuat Corporation, are demanding the compensation for wage errors. In early December, they were promised to be paid by the 14th. This obviously didn't happen, and the people were asked to wait again. The matter is currently being resolved in Astana by the city administration representatives. They are working on the issues for a week, and I've been told the money will be paid on the 20th. Kuwait's leadership says the government never paid the company for the completed eastern bypass. Vladislav Kim claims that if the state will cover the expenses, it will be enough to pay back all employees. The amount in question is over $11 million. Now they promise to pay off to the 20th. This is enough. The dates have been shifting since the last year. The issue exists for already three years. Initially, employees attempted to get their money back through courts. When the method proved to be ineffective, they switched to more active measures. The first mass protest action was held exactly one year ago. Back then, the crowd was approached by a black off roadster and someone inside handed people $130 each. No more money were seen since, only promises. We came here specifically to promise people that all debts will be paid off by March 31st. The repayment schedule has been approved already. This time the protest was not as successful and employees didn't manage to block the bypass. Pushed aside by the police, picketers dispersed in a half an hour. Lawyer Daulia Dromabekov will now face a fine for the organization of a rally. A court in Almaty hosts an appeal hearing on the rejection of a political asylum for Uzbek citizens arrested this summer in Kazakhstan. Many observers believe the judge already has the decision and the process is continuing just to maintain the illusion of the working system. The appeals hearing on the rejection of the Migration Committee to grant Uzbek refugees a political asylum ended on Tuesday in Almaty with the Almala District Court examining the case of Alishar Homshiev. Judge Talgat Zadikov left the decision of migration authorities in force. This summer, the Interior Ministry and National Security Committee detained around 30 Uzbek refugees who resided in Almaty for the past several years, supposedly because they were wanted back in Uzbekistan. All this time, civil rights advocates and lawyers have been trying to prevent the extradition since Uzbekistan is recognized by international organizations as a country with the widespread use of torture and persecution of political dissent. It is wrong that people don't even know that they are a part of the trial. They find out about it only during the visits of their relatives. Four people have been already extradited to Uzbekistan and their fate is unknown. The hearings are held without the refugees whose wives are allowed in the courtroom, but only as observers. They say that absolutely unobstructed visits with their spouses were allowed only during the recent OSC summit. Public activist Jasaral Kuanishalin filed a counter suit against Khajan Azar Sid Kirimov, who sues the politician over a newspaper article published four years ago. Kuanishalin now seeks to prosecute Sid Kirimov for a libel since he supposedly distorted the history of Kazakhstan. The pensioner said in his original suit that Kazakhs had no clear borders, roaming freely, leaving behind only names of visited areas, mounds, and burials. The politician asked Sid Karim to publicly apologize to the people and pay a compensation of $102,000 for moral damages. In case of victory, Kuanashalin intends to use the money for patriotic events. Interestingly, Kuanashalin himself is charged with libel and insults through mass media, namely for a four-year-old article published in the newspaper Epocha. Back then, the activist said he suspected Sid Karim as a relative of Nursultan Nazarbayev and his assaults against the opposition are directed by the authorities. 
Nevertheless, Kohanesh Allen believes the new trial has nothing to do with the old grudges and rather with his political ambitions, since he was summoned to court immediately following the announcement of his intentions to run for presidency. I announced my plans on November 3rd, and in five days, on November 8th, I was sued. Why was he waiting for four years? I think that the reason lies in the surface, which is my intention to run for president. Activists of the unregistered party Alga continue their preparations for mass protest actions. On Tuesday, they submitted new requests to local administrations asking for the authorization to peacefully pick a branch officers of the ruling party Nuratan. Activists of the unregistered party Alga are protesting against the actions of the tax agency and the financial police who instigated criminal cases against their leader Vladimir Kozlov. Party members believe that cases are politically motivated and unjust, with only one clear goal to imprison Kozlov, charged with evading taxes. Just recently, the court has sided with the prosecution. Every day, the party submits 16 applications for rallies authorization all across the country. This preparatory process was launched on December 13th, with the pickets themselves planned for December 24th. On Monday, Alga also submitted requests to picket the officers of the ruling party, demanding it to initiate the investigations against the president's son-in-law, Timur Kulibayev. Unfortunately, the prosecutor general doesn't know anything about the Swiss investigation or the appeal of public activists. At least that is what the deputy prosecutor said on Tuesday during a briefing with journalists in Astana. The Deputy Prosecutor General has a very vague idea about another scandal covered by the newspaper Svoboda Slova, the freedom of speech. Journalists revealed the existence of the so-called death squad within Kazakh security services. It is used for special operations like surveillance and discrediting of opposition activists. An eight-year-old case was brought up recently with a source confirming to the newspaper that journalist Sergei Duvanov was framed by security agents for a rape of a minor. On Tuesday, the Deputy Prosecutor General said, citing the interview of the former Interior Vice Minister Oleg Fedorov, that there is no death squad in Kazakhstan. He says that nothing like that exists within Kazakh law enforcement agencies. In general, I'm not in position to talk about the matter. WikiLeaks released a new batch of information exposing more corruption practices in Central Asia. Kazakhstan is mentioned in relation with the oil and gas industry. British banker Robert Kisson is said to be a mediator for secret payments who helped transferring $4 million for bribes to high-rank Kazakh officials. According to the cables, the money were used as kickback for obtaining a lucrative $219 million contract with the oil field services company Baker Hughes. On Tuesday, during a meeting in the Almaty's Political Decisions Club, experts said the WikiLeaks release launched a new information era. The real politics implies that people will be killed, better yet tortured, betrayed and deceived to gain required information. This is the ugly truth. People say that if you love sausages or politics, it is better you don't see how it's made. WikiLeaks is a small window to the world of real politics. The new batch of cables reveals the attitude of U.S. diplomats towards Central Asian leaders. Spiegel Online reports that Tajik President Amomali Rahmon is called a dictator. Turkmen leader Gurbanguly Berdumuhamedov is apparently trying to please both U.S. and Russia, considered vain, suspicious and a great liar. While Kazakhstan is seen as an important strategic partner with Nursultan Nazarbayev characterized as a greedy, self-centered politician. U.S. diplomats, however, are ready to endure any escapades of Central Asian leaders in exchange for access to oil and gas. Experts of the Political Decisions Institute feel the WikiLeaks data should not be taken at face value since it is not clear how Julian Assange managed to gain access to the information. The oil issue was also discussed on Tuesday by the cabinet members. Ministers learned about the sad forecasts of specialists who say that with the current rates of ex extraction, the country's reserves will last only for 70 years. In this relation, the oil and gas minister Asiat Magautov emphasized the importance of exploring for new deposits, never even mentioning the possibility of developing alternative energy sources. Most importantly, as it was in the Soviet Union, each gain ton must be matched with additional one and a half tons in the stock. Unfortunately, we can't achieve that yet. However, the program aims at increasing the state financing for specific types of exploration and also attracting private businesses for some of the exploration works. 
Magawuf said that in Kazakhstan, industrial production is carried out only at 5 out of 15 sedimentary basins. Next year, the country expects to attract nearly $7 million of investments for exploration, while more than $12 million for these purposes were allocated in the state budget for the first time in 15 years. At the same time, more than 40 contracts with investors have been terminated for obligations default. Another teenage suicide is reported in Simei. 50-year-old Viktor Potemkin hanged himself just a week after his classmate killed herself. The local education department believes the reason for the increased suicide rates lies in the poor mental health of the region's population, while teachers blame mass media. 15-year-old Viktor Potemkin is the third teenager to commit suicide in Simei in the last two weeks. Following his classmate Victoria Latvina, who died on November 27, the boy from a secured family hanged himself. Viktor's uncle says that no one noticed anything wrong about the teenager's behavior. We talked to him after the first suicide in the school and he had nothing like that in his mind. The access to the Victor and Victoria school is now restricted. Children are forbidden to talk to any strangers, especially reporters, who are actually blamed for driving pupils to commit suicide. The second case happened specifically because of the television. The kid died on the following day after their visit. We are blamed for that now, with children saying they see the coverage on TV which makes them commit suicide. On November 28, the boy from another CMA school, Farid Sadikov, also hanged himself. Police refrained from commenting the situation so far, while the education department held an urgent meeting blaming parents for the boom of teenage suicides. Supposedly, the problems should be looked for inside families, although all of them appear to be well off and secured. This revelation made the education authorities believe the entire population of the region is mentally unstable. It is a serious issue of mental health of the region's entire population. According to the official data, one teenage suicide happens in Kazakhstan almost daily. 211 minors committed suicides since the beginning of the year. Criminal execution institutions and central authorities of the Justice Ministry are recognized as leader in the Kazakhstan's Corruption Index. The rating was compiled by the Political Decisions Institute following the polling of 3,000 people as part of its sociological research. Sociologists determined that bribes vary from $865 to $4,000. The most widespread corruption practice is the offering of gifts to officials, cash bribes and shady deals with the state funds. Erlan Smailov, director of organizing projects development, believes corruption is a disease which needs diagnostics in the form of similar surveys and research to be cured. The recent prison escape and scandals involving administrations of penitentiary institutions are the consequences of corruption. At the Security Council meeting, it was revealed that there are special luxurious prison cells with internet access and mobile phone connection. Things like that are probably the reasons for prison escapes and violations. At the same time, the press service of the Justice Ministry was not even aware of the research, likely due to the poor feedback. Interestingly, the survey noted that employees in the justice sector see the situation with the corruption system in a much better way than businessmen and regular citizens. I do not know anything about it and I am currently in the city administration. Please call the reception and ask the superior because I am not authorized to answer such questions. On Tuesday, the chairman of the political party Akjol, Alihan Baimenov, presented the concept of the new national politics of Kazakhstan. The politician said the strategy will be implemented in the next nine years and will reduce possible inter-ethnic tension to the minimum. Party members propose to update and convert the Kazakh alphabet to Latin to better compatibility with modern technologies, including tablet PCs and smartphones. Another proposal was to introduce ethnic quarters during the appointment of high-ranking officials. Currently, most senior positions are occupied by Kazakhs. Actual members said that they will send the document to the government and parliament for their consideration in the nearest future. We try to grasp the issues which the authorities seem not to notice or say only good things about national policies. This is why the Assembly of Peoples of Kazakhstan is nicknamed as the Assembly of Songs and Dances, while the real problems lie much deeper. 
After years of neglect, the once popular contests of folk bards are resurrected in Kazakhstan. In recent years, the poetic battles were banned altogether, supposedly by the authorities who feared heavy criticism. Now the craft is being brought back by none other than the culture ministry, which unsurprisingly installed a few new rules, breaking centuries-old traditions. Who pays the piper calls the tune. The saying was vividly demonstrated at the recently resurrected competition of Kazakh bards, Daitus of Akins. The event was sponsored by the culture ministry and the participants easily accepted the very pragmatic rules of refraining from criticism and instead praising the one person everyone knows. Today's competition should praise our statehood and the leader of the nation. Once very popular, the Aitis of Akins has been under an unofficial ban in the recent years. Rumor had in the censorship was introduced by the top administration since the Baths heavily criticized the authorities and even the head of state. Famous poets were not invited to the resurrected event and those participants who made it through the selection of state judges raised only social issues. Some did it in Russian, breaking the centuries-old traditions. <laughs> The concert hall was overcrowded with the audience hungry for the bars, with the entire competition strictly monitored by top officials. It seemed that only the president was missing. The culture minister also broke tradition several times by personally stopping participants who attempted to squeeze in even a single word of politics. This was done very openly and apparently more instructions were given behind the stage. Before the competition, the head of the president's administration, Maulia Shashambayev, gathered all parts and talked to them. He asked to deliberately refrain from sweeping criticism and use only constructive criticism of the authorities, if any. Everyone was asked to concentrate on the achievements of the country and its leaders. The poets followed instructions and were awarded for their obedience. The Grand Prix winner was presented with an expensive off-road star by the Fan Samro Kazana. The first three finishes were also given expensive cars, although of lower classes. In addition, all winners received cash prizes in the amount of $5,000 each. Obviously, it pays to praise the authorities. This is it for now. Join us tomorrow for more. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.